Right, hello and welcome guys and in this quick tutorial video I will be demonstrating how to exploit or combine two vulnerabilities exploit both vulnerabilities in order to obtain remote code execution so I've got um, a victim machine or a target machine named Cakes alright and I've conducted a scan so this is the IP address of this uh, Cakes virtual machine and I've conducted an aggressive scan as you can see the dash A flag and I've got some results so I noticed that the application has got um, two services or two HTTP services running so one is on port 80 um, and there's nothing on that one but there's another one on port 8080 I've also been attempting to conduct um, a dash P dash just to see if I've been able to capture everything as you can see here port 8080 is HTTP proxy um, port 80 is HTTP so going by the results of the aggressive scan I can see it's running some sort of Apache web server so we visited that address and here we presented with a web application or web page called Carbon Fresh which appears to be a cake website okay so as you can see here it says only registered users are allowed to make purchases um, there's a login page and there's a register page as well so let's just browse on this web application the first thing I might want to find out is what sort of um, language is used to develop this web application there are different ways to do it you can either scan this website and get to see the, the file extension names or I could right click and view page source and just have a look at the page source and here I can begin to see things like register.php index.php search.php so this tells me that this web application was built on PHP so with that information um, from the results of our scan we can also see Microsoft and this tells us that this web application is running on some sort of Windows operating system or Windows server so we have that information in mind so Caravan Fresh uh, has got a login page so if I go to login and try to find out uh, if I could log in and I could also register if I want so as you can see it's directing us straight away to login.php so it says here um, don't have an account yet register a new account so what I'll do is I'll register a new account because it says here only registered users are allowed to make purchases anyway so the first thing I'll attempt to do is to register uh, and see what that presents us. So I'll fill in some information here. Alex, first name, Kimby, the second name, put an email address at alex at gmail.com. I'll put on a fictitious phone number, one, two, three, four, five, six. Put a password, call this password one. And then in my address, I'll do this one, two, three, Byram Street register a new account so we successfully registered an account now we can log in with that credential and we log in So you can see we went to port 8080 here in order to access this web application from the results. So you can see here it says, hello Alex. So we're logged in. I can have my account. I can log out. Let's have a look at what we can actually do on this website as a normal user. Website's a bit slow, but I'm sure it's going to come up any minute. Yeah. So here we have the... Uh, different cakes being sold on this website rainbow cake uh, unicorn cake and awesome mint so let's view this rainbow cake so the first thing I'm going to do in this website is to see if what sort of um, vulnerability might exist now this website hasn't got some sort of exploit of uh, an exploit on exploit database it's just a normal website someone has designed uh, if they've used a specific engine like WordPress or um, 
Joomla or Drupal, then I can start to enumerate to find out what version of that uh, CMS has been used to develop this website. But that doesn't appear to be the case in this scenario. So if you look at this rainbow cake information here, what I'm really concerned about is this URL. Okay, we can see here that it says ID equals eight. So if I put this to seven, uh, I'm trying to see if this is going to direct us to another cake. So rainbow cake is very, it's uh, ID equals eight. Let's see if uh, ID equals seven takes us a different kind. It does. It takes us to the go to unicorn cake. So I could test one SQL injection here by not putting a number, but putting in um, a coat, a single coat. I'm going to click on enter and send that request and see if the database, how the database is going to process that odd request. So we can see here we got some warnings. MySQLi fetch, blah, blah, blah. And this actually tells you that this application is vulnerable to SQL injection. So it is obvious in this scenario, but not in all cases. Sometimes uh, the website might not display this sort of warning and could still be vulnerable to an SQL injection. So we're going to perform a blind SQL injection here to see um, to dump the credentials or dump any sort of data that is on the back-end database of this web application. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back to our terminal. I'm going to fire up a tool called SQL Map. I'm going to use a dash U flag. If you want to know about this, all you have to do is just type help and you'll be able to see the various uh, flags and what they mean. All right, so this is something handy if you don't know. So you can see here the dash U says the target URL, uh, and this is how you have to put it into quotes. Okay, so that's what I'm using in this example. So let's clear the screen. We do SQL map, and SQL map is a tool that would test for SQL injection. So I need to copy the URL of this web application the specific URL that is vulnerable to SQL injection, put this in here. Remember, we, we could put a number here like seven, we end the codes. All right, so we want to enumerate for the type of database this website or web application uses. So I do DBS and then I do dash dash batch. The batch flag um, would let SQL map just run on all the default options. So it's, even if he asks me a question, yes or no, it's just going to go for the default option. So it's always handy to put in the batch command. So we type in enter here and you can see straight away, uh, if we look at what is done here, it's, it's been able to identify that the web application is vulnerable. So here we get stuff like um, the backend database is my SQL and the available databases are six in number so you can see and now we have one called Carbon Fresh so the next thing for me to do here is to enumerate so I go back to my initial command I know what the name of the database is is caravan underscore fresh and I want to know how many tables are in this database so I put in dash dash tables dash dash batch Then it tells us that there are 14 tables. The backend database is running my SQL version 5.0, which is a fork of the Maria database. So this is the type of database in my SQL database. And we can see that there are different number of tables. We can see that an administrator table. Uh, we can see some customer table. We can also see some information. Let's have a look at the customer table. So we go back in here and we go to dash C. Um, the dash T for the table, the customer table, we specify that, and then we use the dump flag to dump all of the information in that database. So it sees here, it's dumped everything, and one thing is familiar here, this is my account which I just registered on the database. So you can see Alex's Gmail and the information, and this is my password, um, which is a hash representation of my password. We can crack this, uh, with uh, password cracking tools, but that is not the aim of this.
So we have all of this information. You can see now we could, we could also see all other customer information in this table. So remember when we did this initially, we had access to the, the there's an administrator table. So let's see if we can find credentials that allows us to steal the administrator's password and maybe we can then use that password to log into administrator's page and then see what we can do from there so that is what we're trying to do in this scenario so let's clear screen again all I have to do now is just change this to the administrator table okay and dump that now you can see it's gone ahead and cracked the hash for the because this is the hash is actually the password for the administrator is stored in MD5. So by default, SQL map attempted to crack it and did find out that the password is welcome exclamation point and this is the administrator's uh, password. But going back here, uh, we could either probably log in as an administrator. So let's try to log out. And try to see if we can log in into here as an administrator uh, into this web into this website. Okay, so we try to log in. But here is asking for an email. If you look at the results which we got here from the dump. There is no email for this administrator. So, but we're gonna try it anyway. So let's just type in admin and the password is welcome exclamation point. Click on login and what happens? We're getting some sort of errors. So it's not logging in. So I don't think this is where the administrator you know logs into this website. There is a different page that we need to find where the administrator actually logs in. So this is where we're going to do our web enumeration. So we're going to fire up Derb and we're going to give Derb this uh, web application the URL and tell Derb to see if we can find hidden directories. So fire up this and Derb now has found an admin uh, URL. So I'm gonna stop this here see we found an admin URL here if we right click and open link we have a different login page and here is just asking us for a username remember here it was asking us for an email when we tried to log in so now we've been able to find an administrators page where we can then test the credentials we found admin and then the password here is welcome exclamation point and I'm going to sign in and um, maybe there's a typo in there let's try it out again welcome exclamation point sign in hey we're logged in now we're logged in as admin um, into this place so how can we then go further to get remote code execution and take over this web server running this web application so well, one one place we could go is to the, we could go to the cakes manage cakes, and look at how the administrator actually adds a new cake. We can see in here that uh, it requires there's a file upload, and we can test to see if if this is vulnerable to a uh, a breach of a file upload. We can upload a malicious file, execute it on the box. If the PHP engine processes our malicious script, then we could get a shell on this box, and that is exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to call this hack a cake, put a price of a thousand. I'm going to go into my tools directory. So you should have this tools directory on your Kali. And I'm going to use this Windows reverse shell PHP. If this was a Linux box, all right, we have to use a different web shell. You can type in locate web shell and you would find PHP web shells that you can use so if we go into this directory now assuming this is a Linux box and we go into this directory 
you can see here we have a PHP reverse shell, but this is for a Linux machine. Does that make sense? So what we need to do here is to go back to our tools directory and grab the Windows one because this is a Windows box. So there's one I've provided here. And I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm going to do CP copy, paste it, and I'm going to name this maybe cake.php. Or I could call it cake image underscore image dot php so I have a copy now and then I could have a look at this cake image dot php and the only thing I need to change here is to put in my Kali's IP address and the port I want to get the reverse shell so this is uh, a script that will allow us to get reverse shell so find out what the IP address of my Kali is if config and it says 172.16.2.140 so that is the IP address I need to type in into this place so I'm just gonna move my cursor over here and change this value 172.16.2.140. Um, I can leave this if you want. You can leave it to 1234. I'm just going to change it to, let's say, 9003. Save the file. Now, this is the file I'm going to upload. But before I upload it, I am going to um, new window. Okay. Let's reduce this. I'm going to open a netcat listener. So nc nvlp 9003, which is where I want my shell. I'm going to put this somewhere here so you guys can see it. All right. Browse. Go to the tools directory and pick up the cake image. Click on open. Select that image. Now, if I add cake, uh, let's see what happens. Add cake, boom. We get a shell on this box. So you can see now it's dropped us into a shell. Uh, the PHP engine says new cake added because the PHP engine has now processed my malicious script and given us a reverse shell. So it executed that script and now we have a shell on the box. And if I do if config uh, or IP config, we can definitely confirm we are on the Windows machine. So you can see now from an SQL injection, we stole some credentials, we logged into the administrator's page, we found another vulnerability, which is a file upload. We uploaded a malicious script, and now we have a uh, shell on this box. I can say, who am I? And it tells me I am anti-authority system in this sort of scenario. All right? So hope that makes a lot of sense. Hope that's clear. and. Uh, this vulnerability doesn't exist on any of the machines I've given in the in in the in the labs, but this allows you to understand how you could combine two vulnerabilities or exploit two vulnerabilities uh, in this scenario: SQL injection to remote uh, a file upload in order to get remote code execution. So thanks for watching, guys, and I shall speak to you soon. Take care.